Um, today I will walk through my Java implementation of this task scheduling algorithm. It's called Ming Ming. Um, it's it's all about how to schedule or assign a certain task to different virtual machines. The pseudo code from the reference is here, and if we um, translate that into a picture or a graph, it, this is what it means. So we have ten cloudlets in our case, from zero. 1, 2, until 9, and we have 3 virtual machines. Um, the each block here, so say this block, it means that it's called a load, it means how much time it takes for a virtual machine to complete a cloudlet. And um, what what does this mean, mean, mean? It means first we will, we will search each row to find the Earliest, earliest time or the minimum time it takes for a virtual machine to finish this cloudlet. Say, for example, this one, and we do this as, do the same thing for all the cloudlets. Uh, here we got a minimum for this one here, here, and then we will get ten result, temporary results here. From these ten temporary results, we will pick the minimum out of it. So, if, for example, the minimum is this one and it points to the virtual machine 1, and then we will assign this cloudlet 1 to virtual machine 1, and then remove it from the matrix, and then we will go to the next iteration. So, back to this, uh, <coughs> back to the implementations. So, this is the basic idea of the what I call the mind map. So first, what we need to generate the cloudlet of virtual machine matrix, and then we will go to this do while loop. We do the following tasks, and after everything is finished, and we go back to the do while loop again. And at the end of this loop, we should get every cloudlet assigned to a certain virtual machine based on this mean mean scheduling algorithm. Well, we have just seen the. Uh, <coughs> the pseudocode and also the graph inter in, in interpretation of this uh, Mimin algorithm. If we look at the actual implementation, here is the code. So this is the code. Um, I will walk through all these details, but this is nothing but some the conversion, the process of conversion the pseudocode into real code or what we call real helper functions. Uh, I will give this picture side by side here. Oh uh, no, not the picture. It uh, should be this mind map. So as we can see here, the first step is generate a matrix, and then do the while loop. If we look at the, the code here, so of course the first step we will need to generate the matrix, and the what? How do we generate the matrix? We do it through this function, which will be our helper function. Before that, we got the ready time array to record the ready time for each virtual machine. <coughs> it's very easy. Um, then we go to this do while loop. The first step, we find the smallest in each row, and then find the smallest of all them, all of them. This is how we why we call it min min algorithm. How we do it? We do it through find min min time map. This function, we get a map out of it. I will go to details later in, in later sections. Then we retrieve all the information from the map. I mean, we got the row, column index, and we got the cloudlet ID from it. Then the third step will be we we assign this cloudlet with the minimum completion time to the virtual machine based on the information we retrieved in previous step. The fourth step will be up. After we assign the cloudlet to the virtual machine, we need to update the ready time array, which are initially zero zero zero. But now we, we since we assigned the cloudlet, we need to update it. Then next we need to update the the, the cloudlet virtual machine matrix. This with the total completion time. Then after all this finished, we remove this row from the matrix. We do it through this. Um, method. Okay. 
If we look at the big picture of the code and we compare them um, here, we can clearly see this is just like exactly what we find here. The, we just change this mind map into the code. Um, now I will go to the details. Since we have broke down the project, we just need to implement them. The first step will be create this two-dimensional array matrix. Use this data structure. It's, it's a list of list um, data structure. It's a, basically it, it will give you the table, and what we put passed in as a parameter will be nothing about the cloud list and the, and the virtual machine list. Um, I have also thought about using you know two-dimensional array. It's just like array of array to store the information. But there is only one problem, is that array is not mutable. In the, in the later implementation, we need to, need to be able to modify this matrix. Specifically, we need to remove one of them after each iteration. But we cannot do that in array. So that's the reason why I choose this list of list data structure. Um, Another thing I want to mention is that I add another column here. It's the fourth column. I added to the matrix that was you know, taught in the class because I was when I was trying to implement the code with the examples in class, I found that the result is different. The cloudlet is assigned to different virtual machines. So I dig into it and I just found the trick. So if we look at this, if we don't have this fourth part, let me go through this. If we don't have this column, we remove the row based on the row number, row number zero and column zero. So the row number is the same as the cloudlet ID number in the beginning. So in the first iteration will be fine. You know they are the same or we just remove them like a one by one. We remove zero and then we move one, and then two, just like in sequence, everything will be fine. But if we remove, say, we remove two first, and then we proceed, there will be a mismatch because after removal of one row, the following rows will be shift above. The, and then the row, row number doesn't mean the doesn't match the cloud led ID anymore. Say if we move it up a little one more, this will be uh, row three, row two, row number two, but the cloud led ID will be three point zero. So we need we definitely need this fourth column to keep track of which cloud led we are looking at, and also keep the you know, in order to keep the consistency. So, if we look at the code, look at the code here, so the first will be initialize this table, and then, yeah, here's my um, comment here, we add the last column to record the original cloud ID to keep the consistency, and then we'll, we will get the ID from the beginning. Um, <clears throat> it's double because this is a double, just a list of double, but we can easily convert that into integer. It's a little, little bit of extra work, but it's, it's worth it. And then we just record the load, we just get the load from the, this formula, and we, get, we add load to this temp, temporary list of doubles, and this will form and this will form a list like this. And then we add the whole list. We add the whole list into the, the bigger list as the list of, of list. Here we add this temp temporary list into the table. Then we return this table. The next step will be add the initial time to the completion time. Um, as we can see here, because there's a, just like an expected initial completion time, we need to add them 
add these two together. We need to add this one to this, and this one to this. In this particular case, it makes no difference with uh, you know the create 2D matrix method because everything here is zero. But uh, if they, they are not in zero, we definitely need this method here, the initial total time, but uh, in this meaning case, we don't need it. Then it comes to this helper method. It iterates the matrix to find the minimum of total time. Um, what it will return is a map. I will explain this later. It's a little bit complex. I made it complicated, but it's not that necessary. So um, we actually we need to iterate the matrix to find the minimum. This is because if we think about it carefully, we should realize that the mean mean it just find the minimum of all the values in this matrix without of course know that we do not check the last column we, all we need to do is just iterate through this table except the last column and find the minimum of all of them so that's what we want to do here so in this method um, I use this uh, integer array to record the index of the minimum values I encountered during the uh, iterations, but which is not that necessary. I will talk about that later as well. But the basic idea is to, you know, there's two for loops to scan this whole matrix and get the minimum value. If we find, we initialize the minimum as the first element in the table, this one here, and then we just can just compare every one of them to the first one. If it's less than the minimum, we assign it, and I just get some information of the uh, the, the this um, <coughs> target cloud ID with the minimum values. Uh, I'm looking at the code right now, and I just realized that the code is just a little bit redundant. I could have done this in an easier way. So basically, this index list will record every uh, minimum value in each row, and uh, just like it becomes a collection. Um, but we don't actually need that. We just need to, if we find the minimum value, and we just you know ignore and replace the old one, and that's it, and record the current minimum values. Row number, column number, cloud data ID, and the minimum value, and that's it. So, also, we don't actually need this map to, you know, to record all the information to restore all the information. We just need an array, which will represent the row number, column number, cloud, uh, minimum value, and cloud data ID, and that's it. All of these will be kind of a redundant. Um, so, you know, but luckily this is a, this is not an algorithm class. Uh, we don't have to consider the time complexity or space complexity issues. And uh, also, I, because I used also use this map, this return the map in other helper functions. So I will stick with it. Also, I, I think uh, I practice my knowledge and coding skills with map data structure. So I consider it as still as uh, beneficial. But definitely, all this code looks very ugly here. The next helper function, see, I used map in first in previous step. I have to use map to uh, use this method to retrieve the key, which will be row number, column number, and cloud ID. And I also need another helper function to get the minimum value from the map. All the all of this can be done in, a, in an array, simply an array. So that's just my afterthought. Then after this, we need to update the total time matrix. Uh, the idea is that you know, if we look at the oops, if we look at the picture here, uh, for example, if column one and row and row one. This cloudlet has the minimum completion time, and we submit it to the virtual machine already. 
So we need to update all these expected completion time only in this column, right? So we will calculate, if we think about it carefully, we should figure out that it's actually what we need to do is to get the difference between the old ready time number and the new ready time number. And that we get a difference between them and that add that difference to every element in the rest of this column. So this is the method to update it. We just scan it, just an iterate, just follow up iteration. And uh, we, since it's a list of lists, we need to use this set method to change the values. After this, this is just some simple method to help me to print out the uh, matrix. When I was you know, trying to implement the code, I need to print out the matrix to see where I am and see if I got any wrong row removed. Also, <laughs> I use the map, so I need to print out the map to see all these informations. I use it to print out the informations here. And then next one will be calculate the, turn, the turnaround time. So this is pretty simple. It's the finish time minus the arrival time. We just get the finish time for each cloudlet. If we run it right now, we can see the finish times here. Just get every one of them minus the start time. It's not point zero. Uh, the arrival time. It, 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 all of the arrival time are um, zero. So. And then we add map, get the average. So that's the average turnaround time. And throughput is also easy. It's just like, it's how many tasks finished in the time unit. The number of tasks is fixed in this case, it's 10. So we take the max of the finish time for the result, which will be here, be this one, and then divided, uh, will be 10 divided by this number. And we get the throughput. Another thing I found is that it does not matter when the cloudlet is assigned to the virtual machine. For example, um, virtual machine zero, there are two of them. One is four, one is eight. But it's quite possible that eight comes in first, then four comes in. Um, more specifically, for example, um, for this one, cloud virtual machine number two, it's five, seven, uh, nine, but it's quite possible. I, I didn't have time to check it, but it's uh, in one of my implementation. I I've noticed this trend. It doesn't ma not matter. Even if seven comes in first, it will automatically be changed to the based on the cloud ID, and then it will be executed in that sequence. So it will be five, five, seven, nine in this sequence. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's basically all, everything I need to, to say about the min-min algorithm. This is the printout results. So you see every time it will print out the matrix, tell me, tell me the size, and the key, the row number, column number, cloud ID, the minimum value, uh, which cloud has been assigned to which virtual machine and the current read time array. And uh, this just iterates through all of them. Uh, I will try to see here the example. We need to remove row number three, but the cloud ID is four. So that's why we really need the fourth column to keep track of everything. And uh, it will just print out all the results. And uh, that's it.